Hi, my name is Wolfgang Stötzlinger from Simon Fraser University. And this work does done with Shota Yamanaka from LY Corporation, who couldn't be here today. We investigated modifications to the steering wheel to predict the movement time when the mouse cursor movement is delayed by latency. Latency is unavoidable in computers, and for the mouse, typically it measures somewhere between 30 and 83 milliseconds on the desktop. In games ranging from about 20 to 150 milliseconds, but can be as high as up to 400 milliseconds for wireless display adapters. It is well known that latency has negative effects. In human-robot interactions, these effects have been studied for a long time, and larger latencies result in longer operation times. Similarly, research in games has shown that larger latencies cause people to be slower and increase the number of errors. The basic issue is that people are unable to quickly move the cursor, which leads to slower execution times and also more repetitive corrections. Much previous work has investigated pointing activities with Fitt's law, and the effects of latency in that context are well known. In this work, we focus on path steering on the latency, a topic that has not been investigated before. In graphical user interfaces, this occurs in tasks such as a cascaded menu, where people have to steer through the path of the menu to be able to select the specific item in that menu. Other tasks that involve steering include painting within boundaries or lasso selection. The main hypothesis behind our, this work is that we believe that latency also affects path steering efficiency. Consequently, we investigate new steering models to predict the relationship between latency and task completion time. To look at this, we conducted five crowdsourced experiments. The first one was a goal crossing study to derive the model. Experiments 2, 3, and 4 investigated different types of paths, ranging from a linear path to a circular one to a narrowing path, and investigated the effect of latency within those. Finally, in the fifth experiments, we looked at path steering with target pointing, which is representative of menu selection tasks. Goal crossing is predicted by Fitt's law and, as illustrated on the slide, we know from research into Fitt's law that pointing on the latency increases the movement time linearly. Consequently, we hypothesize a linear increase of movement time for goal crossing too. In our first study, we used 38 mouse users and added between 0 and 200 milliseconds and investigated conditions with multiple target distances and line widths with repeated trials. In each case, the user had to start from the left and then make a stroke through both goals. Based on previous work, and as we used crowdsourced participants, we assumed an average end-to-end -end latency of 500 milliseconds. The data shows that, as the latency increases, the movement time increases for the same ID. When we separate the data by different latencies, we see good fits for Lyft's law models with adjusted R-squared higher than 0.94. However, when we take all the data together, movement time predictions become less reliable with a single model. When we use a model that includes the latency term, we achieve an adjusted R-squared of 0.96, which is a significant improvement according to the AIC and RMSE, RMSE for a leaf one out cross-validation. So our hypothesis that fits law with a latency term predicts goal crossing under latency is supported. As a side note, we assumed the base lat latency of 50 milliseconds. Yet, because it is a linear term, the actual latency value really only has a linear effect on the model and thus does not change the model fit. Building on the first experiment that established that gold crossing is predicted by a linear model, we now generalize from gold crossing to path steering by following the same process as Akkad and Chai's steering law derivation. We start by looking at two subsequent crossing tasks and then n crossing tasks. As we take this process to infinity, it becomes a path steering task. When doing this, we use a Taylor approximation and they can then absorb the logarithmic term in the denominator into the constant, arriving at a model with a linear latency term. We investigated this model in a linear path steering study where we explored a range of latencies and path lengths and widths and recorded how users perform. As you can see in the bottom right, in each task, people had to steer from the left to the right through a well-defined path without making an error. The results show that the latency term substantially and significantly improves the model fit according to multiple measures, 
And so we can state that the month and time is accurately predicted by the model that has a linear latency term. In other words, we now know that we can generalize Fitts law works to linear paths during by adding a linear model term. In our third experiment, we investigated paths during with circular paths and found very similar results with essentially the same outcomes as in the same study. So I refer you to the paper for details of that study. In our fourth experiment, we investigated a narrowing path where the user has to change the speed along the path as the task gets more difficult, the further you get into the path. We approached a similar to previous work, which has looked at narrowing paths. In essence, as the path with changes, the difficulty goes up in a predictable manner, so one can integrate this over the entire length of the path. When we do the derivation, we find the result for steering with latency again boils down to a linear term that gets added to the model. In the user study, we investigated this again across a range of latencies, across a range of path lengths and widths. I believe that it is not very surprising if I say at this point that our outcomes were similar as in experiment 2 and 3, and that the latency term increased the fit significantly. For details, I again refer you to the paper. In experiment 5, we looked at a linear path followed by an end action where the user has to click on the final target. This is similar to when you navigate through a cascaded menu, where you have to steer first through the high-level me menu item and then click on the intended menu item. For this task, we found three different models from Kulikov, Denalein, and Senanayake in the literature and we investigated all three of them. They have different indices of difficulty that either combine the steering and pointing ID or treat them independently or treat the pointing action at the end of the steering action as a separate one. Because we know from our previous experiments that the linear latency time is a good choice, we modified these three models to add a linear latency term. In the experiment, we again investigated a range of latencies, different path lengths, path widths, and target sizes with well over 8,000 trials. In the video, in the bottom right, you can see how this task looks, where you start from the left and you steer through the path until you click on that target. Overall, we found that the latency term improves the movement prediction in all three considered models. In the top row, you can see the models without the latency term and on the bottom with the latency term. It is visually easy to verify that the latency term much improves the fit to the data. This was also confirmed by the statistical analysis through the adjusted R-squared, AIC, and RMSC of the leaf one out cross-validation. Further, we found that the modified Denaline model and the modified Senanayake model are significantly better than the other models, but are not different from each other. So, from this we can conclude that these two models are the best outcome for this study. Finally, we apply what we have learned from these studies in an application scenario where we deal with a primary display and a secondary display that is cast over a wireless adapter to a different display. In this case, the secondary display has much higher latency. We can now use the fact that we know that the latency is much higher to change the steering task on the secondary display to be the same difficulty as the one on the primary display, making the tasks equally difficult, which we can simply do by inverting the equations. In this video, you can see on the left the normal display and the display with the adjusted index of difficulty on the right side, where we get a similar task difficulty. Conceptually, this is similar to the office ribbon menu, which automatically adjusts the target size to be the same index of difficulty regardless of the screen resolution. In summary, we modeled the movement time of paths during tasks under latency through a simple linear term and found that this works quite well. As far as limitations are concerned, we investigated only a mouse and only a certain range of latencies. Yet, we believe that our work will generalize towards many other situations as well, which is a topic for future work. Thanks for listening.